All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm gonna I wanted to run through an example of how to test for time and variance because I feel like that's a, t a difficult one for students to to get familiar with, or um, I, I feel like that's the one that they have the most trouble with when they're <clears throat> trying to become familiar with thesis property. So, and then I figured I might as well just just do the other ones. I'll probably do um, time and variance in its own video, and then I'll come back and I'll do memory linearity, causality, and stability in the next video because those are a little quicker. Um, but section 1.6.5, page 50, a system is time invariant if a time shift in the input signal results in an identical time shift in the output signal. That is, if y of n is the output of a dt time invariant system when x of n is the input, then y of n minus n sub naught is the output when x of n minus n sub naught is applied, okay? So we're gonna have, we're gonna have, here's how we're gonna go about this. We're gonna have x1 of t. That's gonna give us a y1 of t. And then we're going to shift y1 of t by t naught, right? Simple as that. And then we're going to have an x2 of t. And we're going to say that's equal to a time-shifted version of x1 of t. Same shift, t0. And that gives us some output, y2 of t. And we want to see, does this equal, are these two things equal? Now, for uh, for y1 of t, we can just take our our equation given, and we're going to write x1 of tau d tau. Now, now let's before we apply this time shift, let's talk about why when we when when we apply this time shift that it is only going to apply at this t and not at this variable of integration. And let's say that, uh, let's say that x1 of t is equal to, uh, let's just something simple, let's say, let's just say it's equal to x, or um, excuse me, let's just say it's equal to t. Right. If we did that, we'd have y1 of t is equal to 2t from negative infinity to, or, or from negative infinity to 2t, and it would be uh, tau d tau, and that equals um, 1 over 2, excuse me, tau squared. And then we want to evaluate that at 2t and negative infinity, right? So we can see here that we're going to get our, our y1 of t. It pretty much gives us another uh, a formula, you could call it. We don't, I don't like to use the word formula when, when talking about in this class because we're trying to get away from the math mind of formulas and whatnot, and we want to start thinking about things in signals and systems context. But the whole point is here is that x1 is going to give us, we have some input x1, and that gives us some output y1, right? And here, what's just an arbitrary y1? Here's an arbitrary y1, and it comes down. All right, it's not a good one to do when we do this one, just because it's easier. It gives us some y1 like that, right? Then if we shift, if we shift our output, then we're gonna get this. We're just moving it, right? And all this boils down to is that when we when we do shift y1 by t naught, 
we're only applying that T naught right here. So we have the integral from negative infinity to 2 T minus T naught. And it's still going to be X1. And it's still going to be of tau. And it's still with D tau. Now, for Y2, come over here. That's equal to the integral from negative infinity to 2t of x sub 2 of tau d tau. Now we're shifting what we're going to, we, we've said that x2 is equal to a time shifted version of x1, right? Now we have these tau's in here. Um, you, I hope you remember from first year calculus that if we are going to be integrating to a variable, which we are, we're integrating to t, then we cannot have our variable of integration be the same variable as the bounds of integration. So that's why we have that tau here. But it's really just a dummy index. But we know that x2 is a shifted version of x1, whether it's of t or not of t. X2 is a shifted version of X1. So we apply the shift right here and not up here. So what we get is from 2T or from negative infinity to 2T um, of X1 of tau minus T naught, the, sh the shifted version, right? T tau. So now we have, <clears throat> so now we have Y1. We have our, we have, what does it say up here? We have applied a time shift of the output signal right here, right? And does that equal this? A what the result when we apply the identical time shift to our input. Now I'm sure that there are some cases that we you know we could we could figure out some some ways to make these equal to each other, but we have a different integrand and we also have a different upper bound of integration. And there is going to be at least uh, and, and there's going to be a lot more than one. We could, we could have a lot more than one input signal where this is not going to be equal. And if it's not equal for one, in, for one input signal, right, then, it's, then it is a non, it's a, not a time invariant system. So this system is, there's two ways to say this, and you have to be careful sometimes when you read it. This system is not time invariant and that is also known as this system is time variant I try to stick with this terminology, time invariant, because this class deals a lot with linear time invariant systems. But this this pops up once in a while where it'll just say, is it time, you know, it's time variant or it, or it is not time variant. If it is not time variant, then it is time invariant. And if it is time variant, then it is not time invariant. Um, this is an important thing to know how to do might pop up in this class again after this week's homework. Hint, hint. And this is a handy definition. Uh, you know, if you if you struggle to remember what time variant is, you well, you might be making a might be making a formula sheet at some point in this class. So this might this might be handy to to read this page and, and put that down somewhere. Another hint, hint for you. But uh, so. So that, yeah, that's this. I'll come back and I will do memory, causality, stability, and linearity in the next one because those are all a little quicker.
Thanks.